Now, I think there's a, a common assumption that there are really two parts to memory and recalling memory. There's the storage, you know, there's, it somehow it gets, you know, planted into our brain somewhere. And then there is the, the recalling part. Uh, and my, my understanding of modern neuroscience is it, it's more or less assumed that there's no such thing as calling back up a pure memory. Uh, so I guess the, the question then is, is the problem in term, if, if we define the problem as not being able to retrieve a, a perfect memory, is the problem in the storage or is it the problem in the, the recall? Or both? It can, be, it can be in either or both, just depending on a host of circumstances. So for example, um, when we encode information from the world, uh, the mind doesn't act like a camera or photograph just taking a literal picture of, of what's out there. What's coming in is interacting with what's already there. And so, for example, when we have an experience, part of what we store about that experience may be our own reactions to that ex experience or inferences that we make about what's happening, whether it's actually happening or not. And those inferences can go in and be part of our recording of the event. And so in that sense, if we infer something that didn't happen, but we think is likely to happen or we're concerned might happen, we could have a distorted memory from the very beginning. Uh, other kinds of uh, distortions in memory do occur more at the time of, of retrieval. Um, we know from actually some of Joe Ledoux's work from his lab and, and other labs, and you've alluded to this earlier, that when you recall a memory, uh, it's not just simply a readout. Uh, you've got to store that memory or consolidate that memory all over again, and the memory at that time can be vulnerable to changes from outside influences. So there are lots, there are lots of uh, points along the way where memory uh, can be distorted or changed. 